Hello, J Train Podcast viewer. We have Jordana Abraham from Betches. We got Des Bishop with his new comedy special. We also talk a lot about weddings and potlucks. It's a date. Of course, it's a date. Of course. Gonna... She got back in half a second. Now she's literally know how to go waiting. Out with her. <laughs> I do think, here's the thing I don't think in like extreme games, but a little five game. minutes, 10 minutes. An hour. If she had waited an hour, I would have. I, an I think hour? Would, What's the sweet spot? An hour. An hour. I think. An hour is hours. when you're just starting to get a little nervous. But right. Like, like, not just a little. Right. Did I. Uh, um, and I, I, it's not even like I'm. I wouldn't be nervous. I'm just like, oh, you got shit going on. Right. Now I'm convinced you have nothing, nothing. going right. on. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's a problem. Not even another text to answer before mine. Right. You didn't have one. Per you didn't even. You, there wasn't even enough time for you to screenshot me going, hey, want to go out tonight. Right. And send, send it, it to, to the someone. group chat. Yeah. <laughs> little you know despy. I mean? Just a little. A little despy. Yeah. Excited. Or it's excited. Well. This is how the podcast starts. There, Keep this in. The line between yeah. excited and desperate is is blurry. It is, right? Yeah, yeah. Where does one begin and the other one end? I want to Where be does excited. one begin? So are the people on um, Married at First Sight. They're excited. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're excited. It's someone. Yeah. Welcome to the new J Train podcast. They're just pumped at someone. Well, welcome to the J Train Podcast. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday. Uh, we tell some stories. We have some fun. Uh, we give emails. Send them in. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. It's JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. And you can send your luxury lounge complaints. You can send your Am I Crazy Dogs. You can send your situational advice issues. We love an advice question. Today, we're going to do a bunch of segments. Teach a man new tricks. We're going to receive some advice from my co-host, who I'm so excited to have. Uh, we got news. We're going to do some news. We're going to do a luxury lounge complaint. We have the mailbag. And then uh, we're going to talk about potlucks. And I think we have a guest. We got another. We got a guest today. Um, we have an interview that we're going to do um, with Des Bishop, who's got a special coming out on YouTube. We always, you know, listen. We're going to have guests on from time to time. Some people just text me and they go, can I push my special? And I'm like, yeah, let's give you five minutes because I just want people to be aware. You know, so I didn't want to leave that behind in the old podcast. I want to make sure people can come on and say, hey, go watch and we'll do five minutes. And I, You know, Dad is a great guy. Very excited. My co-host this week, Jordana Abraham. Thank you for coming. on. Thanks for having me. Enjoy any time where we can get together and just talk. Right. And while other Dating people or listen. otherwise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, we do, when we talk, we generally like, we go into a, I think every time we talk, there's a podcast there. Totally. I mean, there's some stuff that's not fit for public consumption. Right. But... We, we, <laughs> pay, we would need like a yeah. higher level paywall. Yes. You know? Yes. For the amount of shit that we talk for sure. Right. But, um, you know, whether we're recording or not, always a good conversation. <laughs> listen, um, and, as you as you all know, Jordan and I co-host the UAP podcast, where all your dating questions are solved. We solve dating. Not every even week. just explored, solved. No, no, no. Yes. We we solve yes. your dating. Right, that's right. Hundred percent solve. Right. We explore them yeah. first, and then we go. Right. I mean, whether or not you choose to take the advice. Well, we were. I mean, there's a lot of times where I confide in you and my dating. We were just talking as we started this yeah. podcast. I texted someone, "Let's make a date." They wrote back within half a second. We said, and we go, what? I, excited I, or desperate? Excited or desperate? It's yes. a fun game. Yes. That's a good game for good, us to play. Sub, submit your, uh, submit your excited or desperate. Yes, excited. with the person that you're dating. How did? What did they do? Was it exciting or desperate? Right. Did you see it as excited? Yeah. Did or you? Desperate? Or did? Yeah. As them being excited or desperate, rather. See, I didn't see. I like that it's like Bing Bang Boom. We're set up. Now I got a plan. Right. It's done. You don't have to be like texting for six hours, but. It's kind of like a, I've said I've seen this with like a guy, you know, because as a, as a woman, you want a guy to like plan the date and have mm -hmm. a spot. But sometimes when it's like. Too planned too quickly, you're like <laughs> desperate. 
Right. Excited well, or yeah, well, that's kind of to the right. point because I got back with a plan right away. You know, yeah. you go, if I said like, hey, how does tonight at 8 You're talking sound? about tonight, though. Tonight, never desperate. The day of next week, making the plan. Right. Ne- right. I'll see you next Thursday, the, the 28th. At uh, this at this place, it's like I've got a reservation. It's like whoa, ten days in advance. Right. What do we do now? Desperate or excited? <laughs> That's a little desperate, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, you know, now that I think about it, because like day of, like to me, I want a first date to be casual. I want it to like, I want it to be a sprint. Right. First date sprint, fine. Second date, um, less casual. I think more less more planned. Yeah, more planned. Because first date, it's like. I don't know you. You don't know me. We might not like each other. Right. We don't need to put too much effort into this. Like, let's make it casual. Just mm. like to dip your toe in to see if you like it. Second date, it's like you have a sense of me. Are you excited? More more appropriate to be excited for the second date. Right. Less you, of a turn off. You have you you've gotten a taste of them from the first yeah. date, and now you're like, I want some more. I want the full course. Exactly. Yeah. I. It's funny because I'm off dating apps. Right. And any dating opportunities coming from meeting in public, which is good. But then it's also we've kind of had the first date. Right. When you meet in public, that is the first date in right. another context. Like if you met a, if I met this person on a dating app, I'd be like, well, it's more then it's more OK to be excited, I think, for the first date after meeting. in person. Right. And it's I, I guess it's OK to more have like that, like better plan. Right. Because you're like, okay, we've done the, where are you from? <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, you, you know, know the, you, the, well, you also, you stuff. know you have like a chemistry of sorts. Right. Because you wouldn't have gone on the first date if there was nothing there. So on the subject, I'm at a bar last night. Last night, I'm at a bar having, and I've been doing this, and I told you, I don't know if I like that I'm doing this, but I'm doing this like thing where I'm like, let's have a post out debrief drink have you ever done that like you go out like I'll, I'll have my night like i went to the knicks game right had the night fun courtside that's right listeners you're dealing with a courtside host better Not, than you better <laughs> that's what i meant so Sorry. here to translate <laughs> i'm like why don't i go to so house it's on the way home have a high-end martini before heading off to my slumber okay do you ever do that where you go like let me and I I don't alone? know if, alone and I I've been doing this more and more of like a and maybe it's like a phone addiction thing because right. I'm like okay I just had this like high energy conversational night let me go somewhere where I can have my alone time with my girl with my phone you I've know? done that but it's usually like my couch with my TV like the mm. TV on I'm on my phone with a good show as like the background show that to me is very relaxing I call it like the brain melt yes. But you you're able to do that more in public. For me, like that wouldn't be relaxing for me to be in public. You don't like it. you. You would rather a. I'd rather a, be in my pajamas on my couch watching a show with my phone. See, I kind of envy that. I kind of wish that was like my move because my right. move is, ends up at a bar, and I do like that. I do like the noise of it. I like the I'm out. No, it makes sense. I mean, yours is probably a better better for. For you and some, I mean, maybe not the drinking part, but the socialization part. Mm. Because mine, it's like, it's weird that like my soothing happy place is like housewives screaming at each other in the background of their, (laughs) on my TV while I, while I scroll. (laughs) Right, right, (laughs) Like that's not doing anything for anyone. At least yours, like there's a chance of like an interesting conversation. So last night I'm sitting at the bar Mm -hmm. and this group comes up and I, you know, you ever go to the bar and you're like, I chose the wrong seat. Yes. Like I, I'm sitting at the bar and there's a cute girl like all the way across and I'm already a drink in. And I'm like, man, there's a seat right next to her. And I'm like, I can't go and sit her. there. Right. That's a little creepy. Like I can't yeah. look at the bartender. Too ex- Change me up. Too Put excited. Me over there. Yeah. That's too excited. Yeah. Right. Right. And I'm looking at her. And I'm like, man, that girl gorgeous. Like I'm like. I don't know what it was. Okay. And I was like, and you could su- just move down one seat every 20 minutes so that it's more subtle. <laughs> a drink per seat. Weren't you, move- you over there? <laughs> right. No. No, just uh, it was yeah. it was hot over it was, there. Yeah, the heat, yeah exactly. It's right. too close to the door. Right. Yeah. So I'm kind of mad. I'm like, man, I'm in the wrong seat. Win some, lose some. All of a sudden, a big group comes and sits next to me. And I'm like, okay, little action. Okay. 
this woman sits next to me and she goes, no, she goes to the girl the, you're eyeing. No, different, different woman. woman. Okay. I'm, I'm already past um, her. It's over. Uh, she's over. over it. Okay. I'm like, damn it. I chose the wrong spot. But then I'm like, oh, my God, maybe a, my me, my spot came into some riches. OK. And this whole group comes over and sits next to me. And this one woman, she's like trying to get the chair. Have you ever been to Soho House? You know, yep. the chairs at the bar are like big to the point of like you can't move them. OK. So heavy. I they're heavy. Yeah. So I go to try and help her move her chair back. And I go, oh, you know, jump in. And she goes, oh, thank you. Sits down. And then she goes, hi. And I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? And I and, you know, she gives me her name and I say, I'm Jared. Nice to meet you. And she goes, I go, well, what's going on tonight? And I'm like, now I'm in it. I'm I'm having the adventure right. night. And she goes, I'm doing this like. I, I think it was like a networking thing. It was some sort of there was some sort of gimmick that she had just attended. OK, so she was also decompressing, but she was with the group still like she's like us. This whole group was just at this event okay. where there were speeches given of a certain kind. Right. And I go, well, that's nice. Uh, I, and she goes, what are you doing? I go, oh, well, I was just at the next game and now I'm here. And I'm having a drink. And she goes, well, what do you do? And I go, well, I'm a comedian. And she goes. OK, <laughs> she said, OK, yeah, she goes, OK. And I go. Not even okay. like cool. It was it was bizarre. OK. She goes, OK. That's um, it. Um, <laughs> And she's looking at me and she and I go. What do you do? <laughs> and, and like, I'm like trying right. to like help hold her hand. I mean, I'm a comedian is a great conversation starter in itself. Well, that's the thing that's so yeah. bizarre. She goes, I'm just ta and I go, well, what do you do? She goes, hold on. I'm just taking this all in. And I go. It's not like you said you were an astronaut. That's right. <laughs> right. What, and I and, and I go, well, what's the serial killer? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I fuck women after they talk to me for two minutes at the bar. You win? <laughs> right. Like, I didn't, like, say anything ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> and she goes, she goes, uh, no, I'm just taking this all in. I don't mean to offend you. And I go, I'm not offended at all. I go, you know, just, I, I go, what do you do? And she's like, well, I'm an entrepreneur. And she's like, do you live near here? And I go, yeah, I live down the street. And she's like, okay, well, you're not like, you're not giving funny, like, Oh off. my God. And I'm like, yeah, I go, that's okay. And she's like, <laughs> you just seem upset. Are you upset? And I go, and it's my least favorite quality in okay. someone is when someone says to you gets ahead of it right. to tell you are the, the are How you, you okay person she start going are you okay? okay and i go i am totally fine she goes are I, you okay right and, and right, 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 right. i can't i can't right. I, i've lost i think you've lost the are you do you know what i mean right it's already over it's over right the minute someone says are you okay there's no coming back right to show them that you're okay from where yeah, they you're not going to you suddenly turn change the entire disposition immediately. Absolutely right. not. And the vibe has been ruined completely. And I just and I looked at her. I go, listen, it was nice to meet you. Good luck with everything. And she's like, oh, uh, well, are you sure you're not OK? Do you want to talk about it? And I'm like, in what <laughs> world? Talk about she actually said that to me. I go, in what world would I want to? And I feel a little bit hamstrung. Like you feel like locked up because I'm not going to argue with this person. Well, this is just like to me a clear example of like the vibe is not there. This is where like the perfect thing where it's like you didn't this would be the perfect scenario where you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't go on a first date with this person. Right. We met in person and like there was clearly like a disconnect, like mm -hmm. whatever you're selling, they're not buying and vice versa. This is the bad first date. Yes. Yes. But you didn't have to go on a first date. So this right. is kind of ideal. Well, I guess that is the beauty if you want to look on the positive side yeah. of things. Because I literally said to her, I go, have a good night. Because the idea that I'm going to go to look at her and say, I'm fine. You just attacked me. Like, I'm not right. going to get in an argument with her. And we hear about it all the time with these, like, bad first date stories. It's like, no, you two should, like, and they feel locked in because they're like, we agreed to this date. Right, we should finish it. Well, we it's like, it feels rude to leave before the check or like, right. well, you know. The, the check is an issue, too. It's the thing holding you guys there. Right, well, that's why when you're meeting out, you can just like, leave. You, well, haven't, you haven't made an appointment with each other. Right, I literally yeah. turn, I go, have a good night, and I turned and left. I think I, that's fine, yeah. Right, I, it was totally appropriate. I just, I get in these things, 
sometimes, and I think you and I share this, where, and I get this a lot because as a comedian, and I'm sure you get this as like, you know, with betches, people just assume, when does the show start? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're a laid back person. I'm more laid back than people would ever believe, I think. Totally. Much more introverted. I mean, you're not really introverted, but you're much more like, I would say like have a have a like a quieter calming presence than maybe you would imagine from listening to your show. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I'm trying to bring that more here mm-hmm. like with this podcast to tell some stories like this one. Right. But what do you do when someone comes at you with the energy you don't like because I do think like you have an energy where you know like if I came that that I I know from knowing you. Right. That you'd be like, get this person the fuck away from me. And I'm sure you get that more because you and I, we deal with variables. Like Mm -hmm. most people, a lot of people, and that's why I give a lot of empathy to like travel people who don't know how to do it. And I give empathy to like people at a party who are a little just too much or come to a show and they, you know, they're like a lot. And, And I go, yeah, well, this was a variable. This was something someone was preparing for all week. Right. Most people go to the office. They say hi to the person at the front desk. They go to their desk. They do the thing they do every day. They go. And this is not to shame that. You're like something new. Right. Yeah. What do you do? And do you have a scenario where that's come up where you're like, I can't believe this person's energy. Like, I I try to like, I mean, if it's a stranger, I usually don't tell them what I do. I'm getting like my hair done. Yeah. Like work in media. Make it as boring as possible. Yeah. And I, I would sense you know the 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 as a woman Mm -hmm. they just assume whatever woman they know in media like they don't right yeah i'm like a big time magazine girl (laughs) yeah whatever (laughs) right 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 right. what do you so but with do you ever have that with people that like you get introduced to like a friend of a friend i try i mean i like get like you just kind of try to like leave the conversation like right it's great to meet you i'm gonna go get a drink right or something like that if someone's energy is too high i definitely try to remove myself yeah, because it makes I've you had, uncomfortable. I've had sure. other interactions. It does make I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and then I'm always the one blamed. Because, For not being friendly. Right. Yeah. And because you and I, I don't know if you get this because you're the comedian. You're not going to be right. nice. That means you're I have to be, be on clown. all the time. Right. Yeah. And the other side of this, I've been wearing this hat that I'm wearing right now. If you're watching on YouTube, it's a Degeneration X hat. Okay. I'm assuming you don't know what this is. I have happens. no idea what that means. So this was a group. I, that's okay. This is a group, a tag team group. A, 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 a professional wrestling, male soap opera, okay? Okay, yeah. Professional wrestling had these groups. And during the 90s, the Generation X was this, like, badass anti-hero in the WWE. Okay. And their whole thing, you might remember it, was like, I got two words for you. Suck it. Okay. And they would do the they would point at their crotch with their two <laughs> hands and they go suck it. I have had more happy faces come up to me. Okay. And say I love that hat. And it happens, it happened at the coffee place, it happened at last night at the Knicks game. Every Oh my god, I love okay. that hat cuz it brings back nostalgia. And then the second thing people say, not everyone, but the second thing they say is I got in so much trouble in middle school. We're doing the suck it thing? Doing the suck it thing. Okay. And I'm like, yes, because that was a catnip to like a right. young person who wants to like tell someone to fuck off. <laughs> and you're told you can't swear at them. And you get served this phrase, suck it, with a full on, because you do like the, the full on that. Okay. With inappropriate. It. And it's totally inappropriate. Because <laughs> yes. you're like, basically, and people would say to their teachers, like, and you're literally looking at your teacher going, suck my fucking dick. And like, women By would just say doing it, the just, thing? And even okay. the symbol I don't know where I was during this whole phase. You, the only thing I know about 90s wrestling is like The Rock. Right. The Rock. Yeah. The Rock. You smell you know, what The Rock is cooking. The Rock was enough of a star where he would like tangle with the Degeneration X. Okay. And, and it was kind of The Rock came in a little bit after DX. A little too. Okay. More they, recent. They cross paths, but they're not exactly the same era. Got it. But um, I was just, do you have a thing where someone comes up to you and is like, notices something you wear 
and you and it, it it just hits for people. I like try to wear. I mean, yesterday I wore this that like pink jacket. I commented on it. You it was did a great jacket, and it was off your normal. It was. Look. I'm usually much more neutrals, muted tones. I don't like to be noticed. Well, that was what I was going to ask you about, like the hat. You wore this hat yesterday. You wore the ass man hat, right? Um, <laughs> the, and the ass man hat yeah. is from Seinfeld, yes. and it's I, I I I go on. But I was gonna say, like to me, like um. Do you want, are you trying to go under the radar? Or are you trying to use the clothes? Like I try to not wear anything that will attract any attention or have anyone speak to me because I don't want to speak to anyone. You know, it, <laughs> you're right. It's, but again, thin line between excited, excited and, and desperate. desperate. There's yeah. a thin line between being noticed and being appreciated. Right. You know, because when I get a person who smiles at me and goes, I love that hat, it makes my day. Now I have, but I also don't but want. Is that where you want the conversation to end? Yes. yes. I want to run okay. the conversation, which isn't fair. Right. Because I was at a bar the other night and I'm wearing my new hat. It's from Seinfeld. that says ass man on it. Yes. And it's one of those hats. It's from an episode of Seinfeld where a proctologist is involved in this. They, they see a license plate. It says ass man. And he's ended up being a proctologist. That's like a whole episode of Seinfeld. And it's a deep cut. That I, when I was literally at the bar, but if you see a guy wearing a hat that says ass man and you don't get it. Right. You're like, what, the what fuck a is... douchebag. <laughs> right. right. What an asshole loser. Yeah. <laughs> but then if you get it. Like, then it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And then I had a friend text me. They're like, if they don't get it, but they still love it, maybe that's the woman of your dreams. You think? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if you'd want a woman who loved it. I don't think you would. I don't I think, think you right. would be interested in her. I did have a yes. woman message me that she liked it and had no idea where it was from. And I was turned off. That's what I'm saying. You're right. I, you think you're like, oh, if they're into that, I don't think that you would be into them. You'd right. want them to be a little embarrassed. This is right. I yes. want you to go. What are you wearing? Yes. I mean, that's that's kind of thing. I don't like wearing anything too great. And I don't like when Mike wears anything too interesting. Oh, really? He had this vest. Mike, this, for like, the listeners at home, is, is my husband. husband yeah, my husband, gonna, Mike. This, this gets us into our next topic. Well, he he bought this uh, <coughs> Faraday. Love, love Faraday. Big Faraday fans. He was big. He is a big Faraday fan. And he went, he was, he came home one day. He's like, I went into Faraday. They have a store in Soho. And he took, he's like, I got some cool stuff. And he's trying it on. And then he pulls out this, like, purple like almost looks like a tribal vest okay and i'm like they do have some like this surfer is a, stuff that's like it's like very california cool but i'm yes. like i you cannot pull this like you're not that guy <laughs> <laughs> you're not that, that guy. guy this is the this is the best and worst part of being in a relationship right is you're not that guy is something people need to hear <laughs> You can't pull this off. But it also yeah. squelches creativity. Like I understand. Right. right. Well, it's like you bullet, maybe he could be that guy. Right. But then it's like you're 30. It's over. Right. You're in your 30s. It's done. You're who you are. Right. It's not happening for you. So and you I'm the one it? who has to be next to you while people, other people think that this is not working for you. Right. What's going on with Mike? Yeah. He still has it. I was like, you can wear it um, if we ever go to Tahoe. You can... <laughs> <laughs> this is where if I ever go to Tahoe, the right. best. This is only goes in that one piece of luggage. Yeah, I mean, he's the same way with me. He'll say to me, like, what's up with, like, that jacket? Like, so he didn't one. like the jacket yesterday. He's not that into that jacket. He we also need a picture of the jacket to post. I'll, fa I'll yeah. I, I think I have one. I'll, we, you got to have one. Sure. You definitely took a picture. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that crazy. It's um, it is a, it's it's a great looking jacket. Yeah. It looked very much like we have a big meeting today. Yes, and, and that was the... and I'm ready for the meeting. Exactly, like, and, and I'm going to be stylish while being ready for the meeting. It, it you know, there it, it it was more, it was very like, um, and I mean this in the that's okay most complimentary way because I like the jacket. It was very much like I'm in the big city. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, putting big city. I'm putting on my big city. I'm putting on my big city. Well, that's the thing. Now that I don't live in the city, when I come in, I'm like, I need to. You glam up. I need to look a certain way. When I lived here, I would walk around like I was homeless. Right. Because I was like, I don't need to I'm not show and proving anything to anyone. Nothing is more now. It's right. now it's like I can't be this like shabby suburban <laughs> like you know right. Uh, frump. Right. Well, yeah. you also want to like you know you want to get suited up yeah. for the city. Like I, 
I do understand because I see that my favorite thing is when you see a group of women who are Taurus and they're all like dressed to the nines. And there's that one woman in the front. She's the one woman from Ohio who's the lead. Lammed up. She's like the one that knows everything in Ohio about New York. And she's leading the group of lesser, you know, chic women. (laughs) It's like chicest women at the front. Yes. With lesser chic women at the back. Shabs at the back. Shabs at the back. Yeah. And they're all dressed somewhat alike. One standard deviation away from each other. Right. Well, it's a uniform. You're kind of, you want right. to fit in. Right. And yeah. you can see it. You're like, you're dressed up too much for Manhattan. Yes. And then you see other people and you go, that's a person. Like, they like look like they grew from the ground of New York City. Because the person who truly lives here looks like shit. Right. Because it's miserable. And glamorous stuff. shit. There's yes. like a. Yes. There's like, there is a glamorous shit. The glamorous shit, I would say, is that trench coat over the sweatpant look. Or like the leggings. Totally. With like the designer sneakers or something. Yes. Yeah. You see it a lot in the West Village. Now, I want to bring up you are married. Um, I'm coming to you for. I, I, I think I'm coming to you for. Sometimes I go to you for like to like bring me down to earth. Like, tell me I'm an asshole. Tell okay. me. And I do think this is a part of this maybe should be the name of the segment is like, you're not that guy. Okay, it, you know, <laughs> like like everyone needs that like friend who can go. You can't pull this off. This ain't you. Right. But this is not pull off as much as I you've been married. You've been through right. the wedding thing. OK, I get a text to the family group chat from Harry's fiance, my brother's fiance. Yeah. The invitations are in the mail. Ooh. Okay. Wedding is coming up. Felt a little late in my opinion. I thought. When's the wedding? March. Late March. Okay. You got two months. Okay. Well, it's destination. Maybe a little longer. Not destination. It's destination for me. Okay. Um, Is it destination for like 50% or more of the people attending? I would say it's 50-50 because it's her hometown, St. Louis. Did she do a save the date? There was a save the date. Okay. Okay, I, I'm just saying, like, I don't know what the... I know, I'm i starting at idiot single guy, never done this, no nothing. Never read a wedding blog. Never read the, a... what the proper <laughs> etiquette for... I don't know anything. Okay. Consider me a clean Two slate. months, I think, she's on time. Fine. Okay. okay. Again, I judge everything, don't know anything. Great. Do you know what I mean? So the worst I see, person. So, right, <laughs> I am the worst... The so, worst wedding guest. <laughs> and I would say my whole family is this way. We've okay. never done a wedding. Right. You know, so we're in this, like... We are very clean. How involved in the planning is your family? Um, we all have, we have opinions on it. I think that's the hardest. A lot part of for opinions, her. not doing any of the executing. Nothing. Right. Okay. Just the just the, the the judgmental crowd. We're the worst part of another family in the best way. I think. Okay. Again, to, who well, it's like when you're planning themselves? a wedding, you're think you're when you're making the decision, you're thinking about what the most judgmental person at the wedding is going to say, and that's you and your parents. Here's an example. Okay. You're, you're absolutely. Mm-hmm. We are. We judge and don't care. There's nothing behind it. Okay. We'll say a lot. Like here's an. I'll give you two examples. One, they're gonna have a Friday night dinner. Okay. Rehearsal whole, dinner. The rehearsal dinner. Right. My parents and they basically planned it all at the one hotel. Okay. At the wherever it's all gonna be, which fine. I didn't know that. My dad randomly, like I think this was over the summer, goes. We're in St. Louis. Why don't we do ribs on Friday? Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> and right. it's already planned. Yeah. So my dad just is tossing out a ribs idea. Right. Like, As, did, did anyone ask? N- so my dad <laughs> goes to my mom. Well, we should do a little ribs table, picnic table. My mom's like that too. Right. You know, like okay. it, yeah. to him, it's just let me toss a, a log right. into the flame. Okay. And then it gets to my brother. Right. Well, your brother's fiance is probably like, oh, it's not like I just spent, you know, eight weeks fully planning right. and scoping out this place and figuring out pricing and figuring out capacity. But <laughs> sure. Right. And she's already made an emotional decision on right. where she sees and dreams of that Friday night dinner happening. Right. Which agree. I'm not saying that's over emotional. I'm saying that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. And to my dad, it's just tossing out a ribs idea. Right. And to her, it's like, do you not like my other idea? Do you think the other idea is not good? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I can understand from her perspective that it's not just ribs. Yeah. No, every decision, I feel like there's so much like 
thought and thought about what other people think right. that is put into it that I could see why this would be like a triggering comment for her. Right. Hey, want to go for dinner at this place? Right. Yeah, but why don't we go to this place? Is like kind of a, 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 like a negative thing to do. Right. Well, I've already put all this right. Right. Yeah. I made a decision. I made a creative. It's too late for that comment. Yeah. And so I said to my dad, and I get on the phone with him, I go, you can't just throw out a ribs idea. And he was like, what? Everyone's so sensitive. I just said, we're in St. Louis. That's where you eat ribs. I go, no, no, no. You're, you're not taking into account, and we've never done this. We have no daughters. Right. We only have my mom, Queen Hen, and that's it. Okay. And that's not a daughter. That's, that is complete. Very just, different. That's yeah. not a woman in our family. Right. That is mom. So I'm on the phone with him. I go, you can't just bring up ribs like it's nothing. And he's like, what? Everyone's so sensitive. I can't just, I, I meant nothing by it. And I'm like, again, that's not right. the way it's taken. She's taking it as like a, an assault on her idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Rightfully so. Now, here's another example. My brother said that there's a cigar room, I guess, outside of the wedding. That's fun. Okay. So here's the second example that, to like make my point is especially with like all this emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. How many times will mom be complaining about the cigar smoke from guests having cigars during the wedding weekend? And I'm like, and I wrote, how big a part of the wedding is the cigar room? And then Ruthie wrote back, Harry's fiance, not even a little bit. Literally, they're there for anyone who wants it, but will not be holding any events in there, LOL. And so now you understand this cigar room is like a nothing part of the wedding. But right. it's available. Okay. To me, my mom is going to smell one cigar and it will be all she fucking talks about. And I wrote back over 50 times. She, just from one time, right? Just from, and I'm She'll like. cling on to the, uh, it, the, the opportunity to bitch about something. We Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I know this because my mom is the same. One. Right. This right. cigar room, mm -hmm. huge mistake. I know. What you, you think it's a mistake. My mom will will talk about this cigar room as if we had a a wedding inside of a hacienda in Cuba. Okay. She will talk about this. There is she will not get past this whole thing. So I it, but that's an example to show you like my we're going to judge it but like let her talk about the Well, the, she's going to find something. It's she, the other thing. If, right? it ain't if cigars, it's not that, it's something it'll else. be something else. Go live your life, boo. Right. It's going to be okay. Well, that's a that's a tough crowd for um your brother's fiance to be Right. I and I and I've you know, told him I'd be I'm, on like I'd be on on guard. You have to be able to hear things and know that they mean literally nothing. Right. But they all Just are let meant. them go in and out one in one ear and out. It has to go it right. has to you that is the way you have to operate with this group. Like when people think that I like care about charcuterie. No, no, no. I make my comment and right. I leave while you eating your charcuterie. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, like, oh, you wouldn't eat it? Of course I'd eat it. You're just making a comment to make a comment. Right. This right. is like my whole family's whole MO. That's so funny. I mean, every when you're planning a wedding, it's like every part of it, you have to you have to like weigh like, is anyone gonna notice this? What is the worst person gonna say? Even when you're picking out like the wedding invitation, you're like, how thick should the cardstock be? Like, should right. we get th they're gonna throw it out? Should we just get like the really cheap one that's like pretty thin or like the triple, triple thick, whatever it is. And I'm like, well, there's going to be some old woman who is like, they cheaped out on the invitation. <laughs> right. What does it say about us? Right. From Even though she's most... just going to throw it out. That doesn't it's, care. Right. Yes. We're gonna, we're, uh, can we take it? Yes. So I get the, so when I get the text of the family group chat, that's like the wedding invites are out. I'm like, okay, obviously this matters to my brother's fiance uh, that they're out. Yes. It's a big deal. Well, this is her life. This is her plan. She's two months out from her wedding. This, this is all is she's thinking about. Right. And I it's understand. like being an alternate dimension. I've heard this before. And you I, become insufferable as someone who was. Well, this is what my friend said that his wife, after the wedding, like it's like the wedding was over and she like shook her totally head. Totally different person. And was like, I can't believe I was that way. Yeah. So I understand that. Like, and I don't think badly of a, a Either do I. I was that bride. person. But as someone who's been on, it feels like you were like have gotten 
out of like a drug addiction where you're like, <laughs> wow, I can't believe I acted that way when I was that person. Right. So you become I become someone you don't even recognize. Well, this is also unrecognizable to me to like, like, because then I'm like, oh my God, now what do I do for the invitation? So my parents write back that they got the invitation. Unbelievable, gorgeous, oh, a thousand okay, emojis. So they okay. did the right thing. But now I'm away and I get literally a call wall away from my doorman going, there's a UPS here with an invitation. It looks important. And I and I and I brought it right to your door. Oh, wow. And I'm like, damn it. Good doorman. Right. He like we're, we're on good terms. He found out I was a comedian. And he tells me jokes all the time. So <laughs> and I laugh appropriately. Okay. So he so then he You're brings, like, you say, I'm going to use that one. I go. That's a good one. Right. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Get let me get. I do fuck with people when they tell me jokes. Let me get out my pen, pen, pen and paper. I do that with badges. They'd always the people send me random memes that they right. made. <laughs> That's a good one. Right. This is perfect for badges. Not not you. Yours, no, yours go up. <laughs> Everyone else. But when I I used to do that, there there had to have been people in your life that like in the beginning they were like, "This is my road to memes are." Oh yeah. Like that they you could tell that they were making like a a. a like a right. This is my in. This is my in, and right. also make this is my new, my new you know job. It's very hard to tactfully decline a uh, uh, something that someone is like. I prepared this for you. I I'm shooting my shot. Funny. Right. right. Oh, so lol. Yep. It, it's almost easier in person because I can laugh and go. Let me go my pen and paper, and then I can right. walk away for sure. Over text, someone can, can go. Keep hey, going. Did you see it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I had that last night. Someone goes, I'm shooting my shot. And I saw the message and they like live in another city. And I go, at a minimum, they live in another city. But like I just, it? I just <laughs> saw it and I okay. like went off it. And then they wrote back to me. They go, sorry, I've never shot my shot before. Did you respond to that? And it's like, I wrote back. I go, listen, you live in another city. I am totally flattered. Thank you. Right. And then they wrote back to that. OK, I'll leave gracefully now. No, 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 no. Leaving gracefully, gracefully was two te messages yes. ago. Yes, it was shooting your shot and then going away. Right, seeing yes. saw, and then backing ta -ta. Like the the Homer Simpson backing into the bushes. Right, that's how you leave gracefully. Yeah, this is now not graceful. Yeah, this is a fucking blunder on your part. Indeed. Okay, I digress. So the invitation, I get a call from the doorman. The invitation's here, and I'm like, shit. So she might have sent to this to me, off the regular invitation sends. Do you know what I mean? Like, it felt like I was sent mine specially okay. to get this big reaction. So that you could post it? I don't know, not post it, but I come home, the invitation's like stuck in my door, like it's okay. like, you know, big packaging. And then I come into my apartment, it's Sunday night, and I'm like, I get myself unpacked, and I'm like, looking at this invitation, I'm like, I think I have to like give them a reaction. Okay. And I was like, I now this is a job. You now right now you need to I do that with I don't know if you get any of these. Do you get holiday cards? Yes. Many of your friends with kids. Of course. It's like you get the holiday card and you're like, do I have to text them saying <laughs> love the holiday card? So this is something <laughs> that is like I think female, but then men get brought into it because it's a wedding. Right. Like what did you the think of the invitation? Hold on. Right. So then I, I literally. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. Late, okay. Because I literally look at this invitation. I go, I'll get to it when I get to it. But I know I need to give them more than just got it. Thumbs up. Right. I can't just send the RSVP. Just put it with in nothing. the mail. Right. Right. So I go out Sunday night. I have a drink. I go watch the football games. I come back and I get a text. So did you get it? From her and, right. and, and my brother. And I wrote back something like making fun of it going hey the fireworks haven't arrived yet for when i'm gonna open it right so i wanted to give it its moment let it let it rest for a second right okay. and they laugh okay and then i go home and then the next day the invitation is just sitting there i'm like i don't got time for it i don't got time for it, it why don't you want to open it well now i'm it's at the point when then i get a, a call from my brother you open the invite i go yeah i will and he's like He's like, well, we're, I'm getting asked, like, what my friends think of the invitation. Oh, wow. And I'm like, I, I go. Lovely. I go. Beautiful. He Just goes, say beautiful. <laughs> well, I, 
I don't think I've ever talked to any of my friends about their invitations to their wedding. Like, well, if he's asking you, just say it's great. Like, you don't even have to look at it to say it's beautiful. Well, now I feel like I, it, what's the proper beautiful. response? Just beautiful. Love it. Beautiful. Love it. Beautiful. That's it. That you would be enough for you. To, it's like that's like what do you say to a bride on her wedding day? You beautiful. Look, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. Does it matter what she looks like? No. <laughs> what bride does look bad? Well, I mean. Uh, it happens. Yeah, but yeah. you're not going to, especially you're in the wedding party. She comes out. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Looks like you're dressed. Looks like a bride. If you don't say you're beautiful to the bride, right. she comes of out. Of course I would say you're beautiful. You. What is the wedding invitation? Beautiful. Love it. Right. Beautiful. Well, love now it. Now I feel like I've at, put out. Walk into the ballroom when it's, when, when you're leaving the cocktail hour. Wow. Beautiful. Love it. Right. I don't know. I've, I guess I've put so much behind because I heard like sh her wondering, has he received any compliments? That's where it gets into delusion for the brides. Right. Because and I don't blame her. I'm saying th there's a proper delusion, but it is delusional. Well, to for think her that men are calling each other the invitation. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything okay. like it. The, I'm going to equate it to something. Stock. I'm going to equate it to something you probably can relate to. Mm. Right. Let's say your Netflix special comes out. Right. Right. You text your brother. Did you see it? <laughs> right. Like, you don't want him to, like, you're wondering what people think. But this right? is my thing. I wouldn't want my brother to go to half see it. Okay. I want him to go, watched it, loved it. Here's the thing. Like, I want a. But you still want to know what he thinks. Of course. Right. But Isn't I don't know want... what this is. This is. <clears throat> I think this is what it, I guess where I'm, I'm I'm understanding this is like I and why I want to put the time into opening it properly. OK. Is because I don't want to give an answer that is not a thoughtful, personal answer. I think if I open it and go beautiful, I need to open it and go. Guys. Great invitation. The calligraphy. But, but specifically. Die for. The calligraphy. Like, yeah. The like, color so, scheme. Right. The way it all, like, it's also funny that they'd want your opinion on that because I just feel like it's not, if I had a friend who was like a wedding planner, I'd be like, right. what do you think? I want the, like, you. I think they want I would me say, involved in some way. Okay. Yeah. If I, I were them, I'd be like, okay, like, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the, the, Food taste. Here's the, the hors d'oeuvres we settled on for the cocktail hour. Jared, what do Don't you think? Don't even bring us down this road. This what do you think? Start a whole nother podcast. I'm saying I, that if, I, I'm, I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, I don't think they want to hear what I think about the really because that's kind of the thing where I'd be like, you have an important opinion on this. I don't really want your opinion on my wedding invitation. No right. offense. No, I, I wouldn't either. I don't have a, I think they want excitement. I think that's the thing that it is most important. They want important. you to be excited about I the wedding. I think to a bride, sure. the most important thing to them is that people are buzzing. About this wedding. About oh, this totally. wedding coming up. Totally. And I think that's. Good point. And I think that's the invitation response that they want. So excited for this wedding. Right. People yeah. are really talking. Oh, my yeah. God. People can't wait to go to St. Louis. Something that's never <laughs> been said. Our biggest piece of self-care is sleep. Upgrade your night routine with Brooklinen's award-winning home essentials. With sheets ranging from linen to flannel and customizable bundles to outfit your whole space, Brooklinen can suit any routine, old or new. I have Brooklinen. I love what they have. It is all super comfortable and super chic. I know Brooklinen is good because even my mom's involved. She's got stuff all over the house. It's great. Brooklinen works directly with suppliers and passes the savings on to you. That means incredible products at reasonable prices. And Brooklinen's bedding bundles are customizable with high-quality sheets, comforters, and more. And they make any room feel new for 2024. That's the thing. You got a room that you've lived in, and it's a little dusty. Let's uh, zhuzh it up. Let's put some new sheets on the bed. It'll make you feel like a million bucks. So start the year off right by investing in yourself with Brooklyn and sleep and self-care essentials. Visit in-store or online at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Use code JTRAIN20 for $20 off your order of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Use promo code JTRAIN20 for $20 off. It's colder than iced coffee at the North Pole out there. If you need to go get some fun in the sun, make sure you grab your base luggage. I love base. I have it. It's a fantastic piece of luggage. I have the weekender and I also have the rolling bag. 
The rolling bag is so good that I bring golf stuff wherever I go, even if I'm not playing golf. Do you know what that means? That means there's enough for me to pack Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then go, uh, throw in some golf balls. That's just not the case in most packing routines. Most of you are putting all your stuff in there and going, oh, I wish I had an extra room for my socks. No, I have so much room that I'm putting in extra stuff in the just in case world. That's amazing. And also the weekender is great. Um, I can fit two nights worth of stuff. Plus shoes go underneath. They're separated from the rest of your stuff. You can also put dirty laundry underneath in this little compartment. It's great. I love that they're thinking of you. Also cushion handle on the rolling bag is something special. I didn't think it's one of those things you go, what do I need a cushion handle for? And then you get it and you go, I can't live without a cushion handle. Base luggage is fantastic. They've thought of everything. Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, Base has your personal items covered. Right now, Base is offering J Train listeners 15% off your first purchase by, by visiting basetravel.com slash J Train. Go to basetravel.com slash J Train for 15% off your first purchase. That's B E I S travel.com slash J Train for go up. That's B E I S travel.com slash J train, base travel.com slash J train. 15% off your first purchase. Get factor and get nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam packed days. 50% off factor with code J train 50 at factormeals.com slash J train 50. No wonder it's America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. That's 50% off with code J train 50 at factormeals.com slash J train 50. Trying to set the mood in the bedroom? Just the right amount of THC can boost the entire experience, and no one knows that better than today's sponsor, Vaya. Their mind-blowing gummy, High Love, blends pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one. High Love can awaken your senses, increase your blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I will say, as someone who's not a user of THC normally I have had the pleasure of sexual experience on THC and I would say it is fantastic and I love what Vaya is doing Vaya is taking something that people who use THC already know that sex can be enhanced by it and they're really honing in on creating a supplement that can be something that's amazing for you and your partner. I love this. They're thinking about you and thinking about adding a little spice, adding it in. Made with vegan and organic ingredients, Vaya is the only lifestyle hemp brand with products ranging from 2 milligrams to 50 milligrams of THC and a zero THC CBD line. They have something for everyone. That's great. Via legally ships in all 50 states with no with discreet packaging directly to your uh, to your door. Via legally ships in all 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. No medical card required. Let the gummies work their magic. If you're 21 and over, check out the link to Via in the description and use the code JTRAIN to receive 15% off plus free sample. That's code JTRAIN for 15% off and a free sample when you hit the link in our show notes. But you got to be 21 or over and take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Okay, we have a great interview with Des Bishop, whose stand-up special is on YouTube right now. Also, we're going to bring in Sammy Sage from Betches to join us for the interview. Des, how are you? You're here. Hi, everybody. Me, Hi. Sammy, and Jordana. Thank you for coming on. How are you? The special's yeah. great. We want everyone to go watch the special. The link is in the bio of this episode. It's called Of All People. He taped it at the Comedy Cellar. It's on YouTube, ready for you to watch right now. So pause, click the link, save the link, and then save it for a date night, night on the couch, Sunday hungover. It's the perfect special. I loved it. I watched it. I laughed. I cried. What, what's going on? And you're coming to us from Ireland. I honestly, I, I'm good. That's all I needed from you, Jared. So you guys can just go do the rest of the podcast because that that was a great promo. I'm good. I'm 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 in Ireland. I'm hiding in my friend's attic 
actually because he has children and like actual responsibilities that are age appropriate for our age. Uh, so I'm hiding up here doing the podcast. <laughs> well, hold on. So this is a subject on the podcast. You are, uh, I are not on the podcast. On the special, you talk about you. Th this is a very. No I'm happy you brought this up because there's a noticeable thing on the special. You start at I'm married, and then you yes. go I don't want to have kids, and then Correct. suddenly you're like I guess I'll have kids. What? Well, it's because it's not my choice. That's the <laughs> so okay. This is this is an interesting topic for this podcast. It's not your choice. How does that decision happen? And and I think it's a very because I it was very noticeable in the special. You know you do that right. I, I you know what that's one of those things that's kind of like a like a un, un, unintended byproduct that you are you are wise enough to sort of notice that I could tell because I I could tell these are these are bits that you've had throughout you know a number of years in, in the same way I have a bunch of bits that I string together to make a special sometimes and and you go okay this is who I was at this moment here's who I am now here's who I am in the future and you put it all together so it. I, I did notice it because I was like, oh, I guess he's going to have a kid at some point. And I didn't and I don't think of you as kid guy. And uh, I, I definitely I just want to hear how you come to that. You know, what's the what's, what's the struggle? Okay. Yeah. Number, number one, number one thing is you marry somebody that's a bit younger than you and is still of an age where she thinks it's a good idea to have a kid. And okay. because in truth, in truth, I'm not actually against having kids. I just kind of got into my 40s. I was still single. I, I, I didn't have any kids. And I had just kind of gone, and you know what? This is not bad, right. this kid life. I mean, the, the joke I say now, because now, I, now obviously it's since the special, the joke I say now is that, and this, is, this happens all the time. In fact, I even get heckled this sometimes when I say, I don't want to have kids. People will say, you don't want to die alone. That's like the thing that people say. Ooh. And I say, and I feel this, it's not just a joke, that you're actually only dying for a very short space of time. It's really not a long time, the dying time. About it after, Whereas the yeah. raising right. children time, the raising children time is like 30 years in this economy. So I think <laughs> you could not have a kid, a lot of morphine at the end, you won't really yeah. be aware, and you'll be talking to like a carer, and that'll be fine. Right, you won't even know who you're talking to. Also, even if you have the kids, they might not let you die like alone you. anyway. They might not even right. like you There's no to guarantee there. yeah. that they want to be there. Right. Or that you want them there. That's yeah. true too. Yeah. Well, a hundred percent. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm old enough now. Like, so I have, I have a comedian. I'm, I have, I'm not going to name anybody. Right. But I have a friend of mine is 10 years old. His kids are raised. Right. There's, they've had nothing but drama, like nothing <laughs> but drama. Like everyone always <laughs> talks about problems, like, problems. Yeah. 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 The kid outcomes. It's always like going to be amazing that you're going to be, your dad's going to be, you're, you're going to be 60. Your kid's going to be 30 and you're going to be sitting around talking about how much you've been through together. Like it doesn't always end up that way. No, you know, it does you not. Addicts. You know, by the way, I'm like a total, I, I'm married to, to Hannah Burner. She's very open yeah. about her mental health. I have had addiction struggles. I had cancer when I was 24. Genetically, there's a lot of problems coming down the pipe. Right, right, you're, you're going to have some, some bad kids. kids. Yeah, I... Uh... That's one of my own hesitations, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> two extroverts? Two extroverts' kids? How annoying. Luck of the draw. Right. Right? Well, that's the other thing. It's like you really just don't know. You could get a good one or one that's, like, really weird. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really weird is, like, the most kind way to put it. Like, I mean... Uh, what if you just don't vibe? I mean, <laughs> right. That happens a lot. I mean... I'm sure a psychologist would have something to say about what I'm about to say, but like if I end up making a version of myself, I will be miserable. Like right. I don't want to well, be put through what I put my parents through. I've said that somewhat where it's like you have a kid and it's like all the things that you do that annoy you that you kind of rationalize. You're like, oh, I won't eat at night tomorrow. Oh, I'll stop drinking martinis tomorrow. You have a thing in front of you that you can't even oh, and that, you have that, that does look, all look those in the things. Mirror. Right. It's a right. look oh, in the mirror. And I don't like I mean, I'm very much like my mother and I have now just thinking, you know, she must look at me and does it, why does it not hard. make her change her behavior? <laughs> but Jared, you're having the baby on the horse. So you're going right. to, I, I, <laughs> I have a future yeah. that's already been set in stone by a tarot reader. Yeah. Oh, you, you, your future is set. Yeah. I've, I've, we've already done a, ta a tarot card reading, but let, I think it's so interesting. So what's the conversation? So your wife says to you, 
hey, well, first, I'm having first of a baby. all, when we first started dating, we were we were in the hot tub, which I actually would you believe that uh, when I met Hannah and very we, we we had like a very quick sort of falling in love, mm. and uh, so actually for her birthday, I did one of those things where you buy somebody a present that's really for you. So I bought a hot tub <laughs> for my house, but because she was obsessed with hot tubs, so I was like, I'm gonna get a hot tub for your birthday. But obviously, it was for the both of us, and it worked out. And this anyway, was COVID we times. This was COVID. So it was very hard to get a hot tub at that time. So that's very that's heroic. Big purchase. Do you have an apartment or a house? It, it, it literally <laughs> no. It was in my summer house in the Hamptons, which sounds okay. a lot fancier. Oh wow. Than okay, maybe anyway. that's what you're like, radio. Okay. You need to do yeah. You need to do a video of your summer house in the Hamptons so we can put this into context of how big and how glamorous it is. We need to know for sure. Well, it's on Dune Road in West Hampton, which is is fancy, but it's a tiny beach bungalow, a three bedroom beach bungalow that was built in the 60s and I never upgraded it. And uh, it's not very cool as fuck. But but I did have to get the hot tub had to be craned in. I had to pay five hundred dollars cash to a crane operator to crane the hot tub over. the But I do listen. I do have a house in the beach in the Hamptons. I think sometimes because Hannah has done very well since we met, since Mm. we met. And has had quite, I want to a, be clear. quite a meteoric rise in comedy. So sometimes people go, oh, you're with Hannah for the clout. But that is not true. Hannah was with me for the house on the beach. Just for the right. record, <laughs> I came, I, I had I had assets up front, right? So you're in the hot tub and she says, and, and, listen, no decision should be made in a hot tub no. with a woman. I could be convinced of that. <laughs> no anything. decision should be so, made in a hot so tub it, ever. Right. <laughs> So, so in the hot tub, I, I I said to her that I still wanted to have kids. It was just like one of these, you know, like a, this was a fun conversation. So now she always jokes with me when I express, like I honestly, I'm at the stage where I'm expressing everything in a joking manner. We actually haven't had like a serious sit down. I have that like <laughs> Irish disease where it's just right. easier to sort of turn everything into a joke rather than uh, say it seriously. But when in the jokey conversation, she reminds me that I that she that I she got married under false advertising because I advertised that I wanted to have a kid. So that's well, kind of how the conversation goes. Good luck with the marriage therapy. That's fast approaching. <laughs> well, uh, honestly, we, we're we're gonna have a kid, and I'm gonna be a good dad. So here's the problem: is that like I was talking to like Rich Aronovich and like Greg Stone, and like they all say the same thing that like it's the most amazing thing, and once you have the kid everything's about the kid and nothing will matter except for the kid. And like, it sounds like heroin addiction to me, but they all seem happy. You well, know? So I, I, I will know. say this. Those are two people who have baby blobs. <laughs> what we just talked about, the, 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 the right. issues we just talked about isn't a baby being like, fuck you, dad, I'm going to do heroin. It's 13 year old mini yeah. Des, but not to, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not to, to try to dissuade you. Right. Right. Once yeah. they get autonomy, that's when it gets scary. That's when it gets troublesome. Yeah. But listen, we wish Teen, the teenage stuff. I've seen it all. So I've seen she hasn't seen what I've seen. That's the problem. Right. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the small issue with the age gap. It's like, you don't know. You think, you you know, I think that's like, you know, like like a, somebody's like, I want to be a war journalist. You know, and then they get there and they're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Well, I, I've been there. I've seen the I've seen the carnage. I, that is funny because you're, you're right to go back to like the blob years like she's seeing other women her age with blob right. children not and you're saying I have friends with 13 year olds 14 15 16 that you're like this is the I'm I'm watching the real documentary not the Disney movie. well that's when you find out like what you've really got right in, that's a, that's the, the personality right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Des pleasure having you on uh, have fun in Ireland uh, we want everyone to go Watch Dej's special. It's out. It's waiting for you. It's fantastic. I loved it. I watched the whole thing. It is so funny. You're going to love it. Um, It's called, uh, as I forget the name, Des Bishop. It's on YouTube, uh, of all people. It's out right now. The link is in the epi- is in the bio of this episode, so go watch. Des, thank you so much. Have fun in the attic. Hey, thanks so much. Let's go to the news. Uh, let's do some news stories. I, I just okay. want to sit here and chit chat with you. This is such a pleasure. I mean, look at we already went for all this time on wedding stuff and stories. This is kind I of the, talk about the energy being a wedding the, monster for years. I mean, yeah. I knew I knew I brought in the the proper customer for sure <laughs> for the brides former bridezilla. Right. Um, so I don't know. I like a few of these headlines. Coachella 2024 lineup. What do we think? When you see the Coachella lineup comes out, 
I feel like this happens every year. Right. There's a discussion about it. Right. And you see the sign and it's, what do you think? Like when you see a Coachella lineup come out, what is your first thought? My first thought is like, I don't really care because I'm not going. Right. So <laughs> that's my initial <laughs> gut reaction. I'm with you. Right. And then I think I'm more interested in who cares. Right. Than, I guess the people who are the worst people in the world are the people who care because they're the people going. Right. And like, they're, the they're people, a certain kind of person. It is a certain kind of person because there's no one on this list. I, I mean, Lana Del Rey, Tyler, the creator, Doja Cat, no doubt is like, I guess, the the nostalgia pull. Right. Is that like, of whoa, you. no doubt. I, I, I can. That makes me queue up a Spotify no doubt day sure at a minute at a max bring some nostalgic vibes i'll i'll listen to no doubt but we, you know when i see the release of it it's more me noting mentally who the type of person is that posts about it yeah for sure and then you're like avoiding avoid that person <laughs> forever like right have you ever been to a music festival um, i don't see you as a music I've festival guy never been to a music festival i'm not I, surprised I, have you <laughs> i have oh i've been to coachella for work for like what brand like? partnerships. Is it as bad as people? See, that's mm -hmm. a good perspective to have from it because you're there not paying for it. So you're not like offended right. by it yeah. if you spend too much. I'm so there the commercially. That, right. Yes. As an outside viewer, what did you think? It's very like, I think it's kind of like social climbing. It's like, who has the VIP tickets? Which parties were you invited to? Mm. Like, are you getting into, I think, what's the neon carnival? Is like an invite only, like, See that Thanks. is not. A, don't you think that's not even in the, the, the what it was meant for? Like, oh no! This? Well, the, the the OGs will definitely probably like the people who were there in like 1992 were like right. when I went. It was just like casual, like not commercialized, not everyone with their brand deals. Right. Well, um, that that's the thing. Like, we went to a. Where is it? It's it was just about the music. <laughs> it's in um Indio. California. How well, how do you get there? It's like two. You either you can either fly directly um, to I think Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. You fly directly into Palm Springs, or you can fly into LA and drive like two hours, two and a half hours. Right, and I guess the and all whole the LA idea, people drive. From I, I guess the original idea was like here's this open desert, yeah, desert. You're in the middle of the desert. We're gonna party in the desert, yeah. and we're gonna have these great bands that we convinced to come. Right. That's a like I to me it's. More like, it used to be like more grassroots. Like, right. Well, I, yeah. I guess I would hate it for two different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like the original idea, I would never be in for, for any <laughs> festival. For sure. Like any You're not all about the music at all. <laughs> no. Like, like I could, I feel like Woodstock, if you were in that generation, the last place you would ever go. No fucking way. Right. If someone, that, that is, that, that's the point is like yeah. what it is and what it's, what it was. Mm -hmm. Both of them I hate equally, but they're two different people to me. Right. To me, the original, like, I wear a Dreamcatcher earring. I go to, well, I heard about this fun concert out in the, we're going to be able to, like, like dance the Burning in the Man desert. People. Burning Man people. Right. But even that has grown. Like, it, it goes, my dad used to always say this. You can never repeat. Right. You can never repeat. You go on a vacation to Disney World. You have the best time of your life. You go back the next year. It's never what it was the first year. Mm -hmm. And to me, these festivals if you know, if I know about the festival, it's over, and I hate the person like Riz. who goes. Riz, <laughs> yeah. right? If I've heard about it. It's, it's dead. over, yes. right? So like, and and I don't think people know themselves well enough. Like, I do want, like, we went a group. Uh, my friends and I, we went to the. Uh, I, you, I, we might have talked about this. We went the Oscars. You I went to the Oscars? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. So my friends yeah. and I, we wanted to. We have a friend who, who choose who predicts the Oscars every year. Okay, and like a bookie. Well, he wanted to. We were like, he goes, I get it a hundred percent every time. He tells us. Okay. All. So we're like, how about we all go to Vegas? We get in tuxes. We go watch the Oscars at a sports book. Okay. And we put bets on all his choices. Okay. So that's fine. In the original intent of that idea, that's a fantastic idea for a weekend. Ten dudes going to Vegas. We're gonna go do dinner. We're gonna have. We're gonna get drunk. We're gonna gamble, right. and then this big you have event. Some sort of a reason to be there. Right. We have yeah. this event. Bring your tuxes, 
And Men need to do that for a guy's trip. They need to have like something for a reason. They're never like, we're just doing a guy's trip. That sounds shady. Right. It has <laughs> to be around some sort of made up, concocted. Th- there's a Michigan game and we're right. going to go. There's never like. Well, this is this is a good. That's a good thing. This is a good like response to men never share their fa- feelings. It's like, yeah, we're not even allowed to go on a vacation together. Right. Without a For purpose. no reason. Yeah. Guys no. trip for what? What are you going to do? Yeah. Right. Sounds so mischievous. It does. Yeah. And I understand that. Like the, the idea. The, and I agree with that. But I also understand why that's like not really fair to men. Totally. And, and <laughs> because we. Like, we can't, as guys, go... Like, women can go on a vacation together and go, oh, we just went in the room and cuddled together. Girls trip. Girls trip. Yeah. We have a PJ night. Right. Why are the men having PJ nights? What is, What the fuck is yeah. going on? No, I agree. You're right. So yeah. we have this tent pole event where we all get together, and what we find out is that at the time, I don't know if it's the same now, you're not allowed to bet on the Oscars in Vegas. It's not an allowable bet. We had to go through an outside bookie. It was kind of, it was a semi-disaster. I can understand that because that's like something that's predetermined. It's not like a game where right. everyone finds out live. Like there's some people who know the winner beforehand. It, the, that Price Waterhouse Coopers guy, Whatever the, the nerd thing. who yeah. brings out the Brought you know, out the, the wrong envelope, yeah. Right, so when that, if, if that event became a thing and we did it every year, over the course of the years, a get different, less exciting. It was less exciting. I can understand someone going, that's a great idea. I'm going to do it with my friends. And then the as you go down the road, a different group is doing the thing in a different way than you intended the first time. Right. Same with a festival. Like, the person in the beginning is like, music on a field. Let's do some LSD. Fuck yeah. And then it becomes, I need to be at the chase tent on the field right. wearing my electric glitter or I will fucking kill someone. You know, like right, I, the and, expectations and it, are too high. Right. Yeah. So that event too built up. Other news. Swingers want you to know a secret. Swinging is not just about sex. What's it about? What's it about then? Let's find out. I can't, I can't wait to people. find out. <laughs> well, open relationships are having a moment. Well, I would. Um, I mean, I guess in San Francisco, I feel like in California, they are. California, we saw when we did the U Up Live show. That ENM thing. Ethical Huge. non-monogamy, yeah. which we both agreed was like they made it nerdy. Yeah, they took fuck boy. Yes. and put a new flavor on it. It's eth- it's ethical, I guess, because you're agreeing to it. Yeah, because you're just openly an asshole. Right, right. Sex is always an option, George says, but it's not always the first thing that we do. We are developing friendships and relationships outside of sex. To me, this is the effort to make every weird thing normalized. Like, right. just be a weirdo. Yeah. Right? And just own it. Have you right. come across? I have I have differing needs. As a married right. woman, have you come across these couples that you get a vibe from? Is it is it as out there as the press is trying to make us believe? Because it does feel like there's this PR campaign mm-hmm. to let us know polyamory is out there. And that's the thing is like it takes up too much oxygen in the room for how much it actually exists in the room. Yeah, I've never, I don't know anyone who is, maybe, I don't know who's admitted. Right. That they are, maybe there's people who are doing this. I'm not aware of it. Mm-hmm. It's not like, if it's happening, it's definitely not discussed mm-hmm. and it's definitely not something. I don't think that it's happening in New York quite. Maybe it's happening in certain sects. Of, I think it's the kind of thing where it's like, your whole friend group is doing it or you've never met anyone who's ever done it before. That's interesting. I, I just, I agree with that. And I just, I, I think this is like an actual like metaphor for like kind of the problems with like what's the conversation. Right. Is like someone comes in with a moral high ground. And the moral high ground is I live in polyamory. I'm a good person. It works for me. Right. You can't just not say that this is you're going to tell me I'm crazy. And it's like you're doing a crazy thing Mm -hmm. like Let's just admit you're the one you're in a very small percentage of society mm-hmm. that we live different, that most people live differently than because we deal with this on the dating podcast where we go, you have to like do this thing where it's like, I'm going to answer the question, but I have to like defend 7,000 right. other things that like, I'm not just cause I like vanilla doesn't mean fuck chocolate just because I think polyamory is not for me and not for everybody doesn't mean that the one person it's working for, I think, is a horrific person. They can go to they can go to Coachella 
and have a big fuck fest. Well, you see in the this, chase tent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the chase tent sponsored by Chase. Right. Right. Um, well, I think this happens because people who are living some sort of alternative lifestyle, it's you kind of. I think it's because of their own insecurity about it. So right. in order for them to keep doing, you see this with people who are newly sober a mm. lot too. You're newly sober. You're you're going around. Alcohol is poison. Right, um, right, right. You or have like, to, you know, well, you have I, to demonize the other. Th- monogamy is is a construct. To make whatever, you know no. what I mean. Like, you have to make you in order for you to do this thing, you have to make the other thing evil. Right. You have to like convince people. What convince people who don't give a shit? Right. That they shouldn't give a shit. And it's like we already don't care about you. Like, <laughs> like need is murder. Like, well, to make it a more a less divisive topic. Moving to Austin. Moving to Austin. Right. There's someone who was like, fuck the Northeast. I'm done with the weather. My family, they're annoying. I don't need them. Yeah. Uh, I got this wife no or husband. The taxes. <laughs> I work from home. Look at this house we can get. And then they move to fucking Austin. Right. And then it seems as though whenever you go there to do a show or whatever, they get on the, they have to convince you. Austin was the correct decision. And it's convincing them. Right. And it's like, no. I don't care. Right. They're, they're like, it's almost like this quiet judgment. I'm going to judge you. I'm going to say all the things to myself that I just said on camera. You hate your family. You couldn't afford it. You didn't like the city. Your taxes fucking sucked. Yeah. Well, they're judging themselves. Right. And, and, and I'm judging yeah. them. But I don't, everything I just said, I don't think, I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. No one really, like, you want to, do anything that's non-traditional. I don't care. Right. Well, maybe the more a, you defend it, it kind of seems like you're insecure about it. Is it? A, do you think it's a millennial thing where like we kind of were like in on everyone's decisions a little bit? We kind of heard the noise on like that's where that person went to college, and that's where you know, and and we're a judgmental generation. A little bit. I could see that. Yeah. Like I, I, I it used to be it was your hometown. Now, and then it opened up and you traveled places to go to college. And then it opened up and you got the internet. Yeah. And the great depressing part about the internet is finding out you're not that special. Right. You didn't do it so Everyone else is just like you. Right. You can see it all the time. Right. And then you got to defend it. Let's do a luxury lounge. Do we have one more news item? What was the other news item? Chuck E. Cheese has a supersized game show in the works amid financial woes. I. <laughs> I would watch the Chuck E. Cheese I didn't game know, show. I didn't know that was still open. Right. Every time I see a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. when have, you, I see a, have you ever been? I don't think I've been. It's been a long time. <laughs> I but I hope. also don't have kids. I I'm hope not so. going <laughs> <laughs> I would really hope that it's been a long time. Right. right. Oh, it's a Chuck I'm E. Cheese there every week. Day. Get pizza. Yeah. My favorite spot. <laughs> Wildly popular in the 1990s, Chuck E. Cheese has steadily been on the decline since 2012, according to a timeline per, uh, reported by Business Insider. That checks Insider. with what I just said. Yeah. Right. Uh, it took a, it really took a hit with the arrival of COVID. Oh, because everyone's like, I'm not leaving the house. I'm jumping in the ball pit. Right. Infection. I think you could like buy it for like $9.95 now, like your own Chuck E. Cheese. Everyone gets a franchise. Right. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese is the place where kids can be a kid. But as grown adults, they should make adult Chuck E. Cheeses. Like a Dave David Buster's. Buster's right. Yes, that's a good point. I guess you're right. Dave Buster's is yeah. the adult Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do a luxury lounge. You ready? I'm ready. Luxury lounge. Hi, Jared. I'll just get right into it. I attended a wedding as a plus one. Apparently, the wedding was pushed back in time where we're the only ones who showed up early. Okay. Can that happen? Um, I feel like you should inform the guests. I later learned invited guests could sign up for automatic text updates as my boyfriend was the one who received the paper invitation in the mail. Yeah, he was never signing oh, yeah. up for- No one, well, that's kind of goes back to what you were saying before. If you leave any of the wedding things to a man, it will never get done, even right. the gift. Absolutely. Like if it were up, if it were Mike alone, no one would ever get a gift. Right, I, you I would mean, just I'm wouldn't the same think way. of it. There are people who have gotten gifts from me and there's people who haven't. I am talked about badly by the people who haven't. I have no idea. Oh, there you like, have... I don't remember and I wish I would I would do I would write the check to them right that fucking moment I found out. Oh yeah, you don't even know how much shit is being talked about you behind your No back. idea. There are um you never forget who didn't give you a wedding. Right. Gift. Did and I give you a gift? You did. You did. Thank God. You did. <laughs> 
<laughs> you sent it after. You were on the list for a while, and then you sent it. Right. You're well, good. that's the yeah. thing. They, this six month got a year. Fucks you. I think you got a year. year. Right. Yeah. It fucks you because you go. I got a year. Oh God. You know how many women I've spoken to? They're like, you wouldn't believe the list. So, well, if believe it's up the to the man again. That's what I'm saying. The idea. I mean, the delusion. There is a spreadsheet. There's a spreadsheet yes. of people who didn't, yes. the no gift list. Yes. I'm on a few of those. You're off of it. Don't worry. I, right, I'm right, on. But I'm okay. not yours. But no, I'm, I'm on saying a few. you're on. Okay. Because I forget. Do you know which ones you're on? I, that's the thing. I don't remember. Right. That's, that's how little it That's reason enough to get married. To so someone else can make sure you give a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I'm thinking of like my future wedding. It, mine's going to be one of those adult Carrie Bradshaw dinner at Tao. Three people. We'll see who you married. Yeah, right. Fair. That's usually it's yeah, usually not, not me. it's usually not the man who dictates the kind of <laughs> wedding that is happening. You're like, this is what my wedding's gonna be like. It's like, okay, right? We'll, who are you marrying? Dream on. Right. <laughs> well, the idea that an invitation will be sent to a man and then they say, and then in the invitation says, sign up for our SMS text list. Oh yeah, it's like the last thing you would ever do. I would laugh so hard if if the woman was like, did you sign up for our SMS text list? I would laugh so hard in her face that I would shit my fucking pants. Well, this is the annoying thing. And you remember I set out a whole fucking 10-page booklet about things to know about my destination wedding. Yes. And, and it was no one read post, it. It was post-COVID. It got made so fun of. Like inv- important information. <laughs> no one read it. No. My mom made fun of it endlessly. <laughs> she was like. I was on her. So, so what happens anymore. after you get on the plane? Do you find your seat? Like. <laughs> Was that in the was that in the booklet? I'm team your mom, <laughs> but I'm also team you because people ask you stupid questions. Here's the thing that I've learned though, is they ask them anyway. Because people right. who are asking you those it. questions are not reading the fucking booklet. Right. They don't have reading comprehension skills. They're not reading it at all. They don't care enough to read it. They just care enough to that morning ask while you're, you know, about to get married. Uh, what time is the reception start? <laughs> right. What kind of food is there gonna be? I've had that thought and I go, <laughs> do not Should I bring text- a sweater? <laughs> Should I bring a sweater? Is hilarious. I later learned guests could uh, could could sign up for automatic text messages. Uh, as my boyfriend was the one who received the paper invitation in the mail, I relied on him to tell us when we needed to be there. I can only assume he didn't see that on the paper invitation you could sign up for the text updates. No, he saw it, didn't care. Right. I don't know where else I could have been. Uh, I don't know where else it could have been written. Since when do weddings do this? Why? We already get spammed enough with marketing text. Please don't make us opt into your wedding text. Be, uh, please don't make us opting into your wedding text be the only way we know when the. Please don't make us opting into your wedding text be the only way we know the starting time has changed. Okay. I agree with this complaint. I agree. There should be, you should get emails. Email everyone. Coming. Email everyone. You I, do you have everyone's email? As, um, as the well, I yeah, I did. Um, I think I did save the dates on like email, so I had everyone's email from that. I remember it rained at your wedding. We did push it back. And you did push it back. That and was I stressful. I got a text yeah. from a random number okay. that like let me know, and I yeah. thought that was very nice. I thought that was like, well, I don't want you to show everyone to show up an hour early in the rain, sitting course. outside, <laughs> just me wet with a little umbrella right. above my head. Well, Where is the bride? I, right. Was the wedding off? <laughs> did, did she not come? Right. The but I I thought it was um nice because I was there on my own. Like someone was like, oh, what about Jared? Like right. Well, usually there's like clusters of friend groups. So if you tell one person, you kind of assume they can go spread the word. Right. But that was very disorganized. I'm like, that's to, one of the things where I look back and I'm like, should have probably had a. To some me, other that's way. more organized than what this person's doing. This person is assuming their wedding matters. More than it right. does. That people are are subscribing. To right. Wedding. I'm not yeah. subscribing to your wedding. It's right. not. It's not a podcast. It's not a. It's not a YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube. The it is to me. This is like, to me, this is delusion for a bride at a level that is enraging. Yes, you have to assume no one cares about your wedding. Right. That's so sort of the. Let's thing. start yeah. at no one cares. Start at me. Just start at. It's Jared. hard though because you're like, I care so much about this wedding. Right. I can't imagine a world where someone doesn't care at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're like living in that world. Yeah. So every I think every wedding, the bride should have a planner and then me. You're the assistant planner. I'm the assist. I'm the don't give a shit czar. Okay. So I tell, tell you, you how, what the, normal, how the guests will react. Okay. Right. I'll tell you how 
the the normal single dude will act, and that is the bare minimum. I would have loved that. Right. I would have been like, Jared, buffet style. <laughs> How will it, what will the normal single? <laughs> I'll be okay with it. Okay. Now, I've never judged buffet style. I like that I can get up on my own. I liked, I liked yours. It had it in the middle of the table. A family style. Family, family style. style. I'm yeah. okay with a family style. A little tough with the nice, but at a destination wedding at the beach, you're not as dressed up. So it's right. like nice. I think at a tux wedding, family style, a lot of drippage. For sure. Not looking to yeah. serve myself. I'm looking to save the tux. I'm also not looking to eat a lot at a tuxed wedding. Also, I feel like most people are eating at the cocktail hour. We're only Unless eating at my wedding. cocktail party. <laughs> Your wedding, different story. It was a little yeah. dark. Uh, cocktail party or after party. That's when I want to eat. Yes. I want to eat in the shadows. Because that's like the fun food. That's not like. Right. I don't re- if I'm like drinking heavily, I don't want like a salmon with like mashed potatoes. I've really. actually never thought of the food that comes out during the wedding. I've eaten it, mm-hmm. just not thought of well, it. That's the most expensive food. Right. I to me, if I'm planning a wedding, it's hors d'oeuvres the whole time. I like there's people who do that. I like they that. They just keep them coming. Yeah. And they keep, keep changing. Passing them. And you keep going, "What? There's another? What?" That the only thing I don't like about that. Shock and awe. I don't like standing while I'm eating. That's I'm with my you. issue with wedding. Well, there Not should be chairs. I, I enough guess. chairs for everyone to sit. Yeah, that's the issue because when you serve a dinner, you have control. As a dictator, yes. as a bride, you're going to want to know when people are sitting, when people are standing. Yes. So I do understand the Plated, need for that. Seated or d'oeuvre hour. <laughs> Just seated people keep walking yeah. around. Yes. Let's go. Conveyor belt. Let's go. Uh, we're oh. heading to Patreon now. So if you've enjoyed this episode, I want you to sign up for Patreon. Uh, that gets you two episodes a week. To me, that sounds like a fun and fair Way to play this, uh, patreon.com slash Jared Freed. All you got to do is sign up. It's five bucks a month. I am continuing Coffee with J Train, which is my storytelling podcast. I te- kind of, I'd say every week or so, I, I, I'm i not keeping to a schedule. I'm trying to like be easier on myself. But like there's a 45 minute episode up right now talking about um, San Diego. And uh, there was another thing. Oh, it's a story. I went to San Diego and they put on this, the marquee as seen on YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could be uh, more underwhelming. Well, th- that was- <laughs> thank you. Yeah. As seen that on was YouTube? My point. Can you okay. imagine? I'm like, listen, the people that are coming to see as me. As seen as in his mom's basement. <laughs> right. <laughs> seen them on TikTok. Yes. Like seen them on Instagram uh, stories. Like, yeah, I, I there's nothing to me. It's not about Kim like, Freed's man of the year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mom says he's handsome. Yeah. Come on in. Right. Here's the thing. If they're coming to the show, they have tickets already. It's because they know me or us or the podcast or the special. Right. If you're just Joe Blow walking around a mall and you're like, we got nothing to do tonight. And then you see on a marquee, Jared Freed, YouTube. No, you're not Googling him. Why would you, and I guess my issue, and if you go to Patreon, patreon.com slash Jared Freed, my issue is like, you're working against yourself. Right. Like You're you, not going to make any money. Right. We we could make more money with Joe Blow. Right. We could get a piece of his wallet. He'd be cheaper. Right. right. This is And if it said Jared Freed Netflix, Joe Blow is more likely to go, Netflix, I have Netflix. I like comedy. Everyone thinks they like comedy. Nobody likes comedy. Oh, no one's like, I hate comedy. Ever, right. It, I, I have hate a good, humor. I have I, a bad sense of humor. No one says that. Right. So when you see Jared Free Netflix, I have a good sense of humor. I like that. You might Google. I'm not saying you will. I'm just saying when you have Jared Free YouTube, right. we're out of the game. No, it's not happening. So Patreon, we do five bucks a month. It gets you uh, the end of these podcasts. There's video, too. Um... We put a lot of work into it. V doing a lot of great stuff and uh, putting a lot of time and great work into the podcast and the Patreon. So we want you to get involved. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. It's a great way to support the show, but also like support yourself. It gives you more podcasts, more things to help you put your brain on the shelf. Uh, And Jordan and I will be back on that platform doing the mailbag. We got an email. Let's, uh, Let's go to the email. You ready? 